Well, good morning again to everybody. Uh, yeah, it's myself, Michael, here out of our Joburg uh, premises. Uh, I'm going to be handing over to Nick uh, and Daniel in Cape Town, who will accompany us for the rest of the morning. Thanks, Nick. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Alpha Technologies from our Cape Town branch. Um, I'm Nick Perry. I'm, wel I'm welcoming Daniel Gibson. And uh, over to you, Daniel. Thank you for representing in focus. And Alpha Technologies is happy to represent in focus as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so I'm from InFocus. My name is Daniel Gibson. Um, I've been with InFocus for many years. Um, I'm back almost probably nearly 17 in total. So i um, experienced the whole uh, navigation through uh, different products. So I'm just going to take you through some uh, introductions and in what InFocus is about, what our product line is about, um, and some technology information, give you all an update um, where we're going from uh, a company um, with a history of uh, 30 years plus. So, first thing, um, any questions, please let everyone, or just post them, we'll get to the questions as and when during the, you know, the session. Um, it's free for all, so please, you know, more the better. Um, it's a two-way kind of conversation, so I don't want it to, to be a death by PowerPoint. So anyway, in focus, we established in 1986. Um, we actually created the projector, the modern day projector, as we kind of all come to love. Um, prior to that, you were looking at these uh, uh, table topped, um, crazy big boxes that you used to put the film across. So in focus invented it. And you'll see from our innovating timeline, going back to the initial day, um, you know, we've, we've created the industry standards for many years, first portable projector, first networking device, um, wireless capabilities for projectors all the way back in the early 2000s. Um, interactive projectors were at the forefront of that just at the, around about 2009, um, using a wand to interact. Um, all of those kind of projectors um, kind of dictated and directed the, the market in terms of where we are today, um, which you will see not only from a projector point of view in terms of technologies, but you know, where we're moving towards in terms of touch displays, uh, video collaboration, um, solutions on the market today. So it's important for everyone to know that InFocus has been around for a long time. We, we, we're, we're an industry standard, let's say. And people refer to us in terms of what we've done. Um, and we're, you know, a player in the global market. Um, so South Africa is an important uh, country for us. Um, so we're, we're really looking to try and get things going again with Alpha Technologies who was appointed a distributor. We're super pleased to have them on board. Um, and I'm sure they're going to help everybody um, in, in the channel um, fulfill their obligations to your customers as well. So thanks for Alpha John, first of all. Thank, thank you, Daniel. It's good, to, it's good to have you here. Yeah. Happy to have you a good brand. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. No, I mean, look, we are a good brand. We've been around for a long time. So, you know, we have, um, you know, quality and a classification in the projector market that um, you know we work for it um, we may not be the top of the list in terms of everyone's uh, brand in terms of on the tip of the tongue but we're certainly in the top six so you yeah. know we'll we'll continue to drive forward we'll continue to innovate and, and develop projectors using the latest technologies possible yeah it's not just technology that that started yesterday or last no, year that, no. that you've not come on the bandwagon but you no, really have been with it for a long time yeah that's it i mean let's say we, we started it all off so all of the other brands jumped on our bandwagon when they realized the technology was suitable for boardroom use school use everything like that so yeah, yeah. We, you know we've, we've helped develop this industry as such and, and we're happy to still be part of that um, and you know we'll continue to do projection business going forward it's our core business um, we're not focused on, you know, doing peripherals. Um, we, we, we do add them as and when we feel it's necessary, but our core business at the moment is projection. Um, and we are looking at doing interactive solutions at the same time. Oh, and it's certainly good technology. Yeah. yeah. So just a quick thing, just to show that we are global. We've got offices um, over in the US. Um, I'm based out of the UK normally. Um, and then we have uh, facilities or, um, in, in Asia, where we do a lot of our production, our main warehousing, and a lot of our administration is done out of, out of the Asia location. So we're all here today to talk about the projections mainly in terms of what we do. 
Um, and as I say, we're at the forefront of it. Um, the verticals we're playing in um, is mainly in the business environment and the educational environment. We're not focused on the home. So you will not see a, a, you know, a home projector from InFocus any longer. Uh, we did have some in the past. Um, what we've seen from that market, and I don't want to spend too much time on it, is that it's a declining market. You know, as homes changed and evolved into large TVs on the wall, you know, with full interactivity and integrated systems, um, the requirement for projectors declined. So today, you know, there are still occasions, you know, where people do like to have a big, you know, get together and maybe rugby world cup or something like that. And then they'll put a projector in the home and all we see it's in a, in a, in a very high end type of cinema room. So we focus on the business environment, providing, you know, high performance, effective products for collaboration. Um, we're expanding the business range this year as well. Um, I'll come to that just now. <clears throat> and then from the educational point of view, that's really from extreme low, low end, um, affordable projectors um, through to maybe servicing like a school hall, yeah. um, that kind of environment as well. Um, and then the technology is behind that as well. You know, we, we want to make sure that, you know, bring your own device is capable. So some of the projectors have um, the ability to add on wireless if you needed to. Um, but we like to provide that capability in terms of expansion to the distribution and the reset, yeah. you know, rather than giving um, a complete all-in-one solution that is locked into that, whether you like it or not, we try to give that uh, flexibility to, to the channel partners. Well, which can also make it more cost effective. <clears throat> so if you, if you do need that optional accessory, well then great, it, it is there. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't, it, it brings the cost down. But... Yeah, and look, you know, what we try to do is provide the core product of, you know, the solution. So in our case, it's the projector. A lot of the business is also still for the reseller is the installation and is the additional peripherals, whether it's a ceiling mount, whether it's a cable installation and like that. So, you know, we want to be able to give the ability that those additional packaged items can be layered on to the customer. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just a case of, you know, one cost fits everyone, whether you need it or not. So we've kind of deliberately moved away from the full integration um, to try and give a bit more flexibility and, and try to keep pricing down. You know, ultimately it's a cost driven market. Yeah, I think that also fits in really well with what, what we do as Alpha Technologies, where uh, it is solution based. Yeah. So, being providing the projector at, at the end point, uh, but providing the rest of the, of the solution to support the whole yeah. install. Yeah, and a lot of that technology that goes with projection, whether it's a you know built in or whether it's a you know an accessory level, there has to be an educational side of it as well. Yeah. You know, not everybody understands the you know, bring your own device kind of capabilities and how the wireless system works or, you know, if you needed interactivity, how the touch display works. So by providing the capability that we support it allows the reseller, the distribution yourselves and reseller to be able to educate their customer as well. Provide them the right solution, <coughs> excuse me, provide them the right solution for that particular application. And everybody's, you know, every classroom can be different. So we don't think that there's a one one solution fits all environment and giving that flexibility to the reseller system is very important for us as well. There we go. And that is for then for business and for education. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. 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 We try not to differentiate too much. There are some features you'll see in the projector range, we'll go through it shortly, um, where you know we've tried to allocate a particular technology or, or connectivity to a market, which we've we've understood. Um, but typically we try to make a projector that is cross-platform in terms mm -hmm. of education, business, small meeting room, large meeting room, right. whatever okay. it is, yeah. Um, obviously, there are differentiations in terms of brightness, connectivity, but that's all down to that. Um, and then from a technology point of view, which is important as well, especially today, it's evolving very dramatically. Um, so InFocus is predominantly a DLP-based company. Um, mm -hmm. At this moment, um, we are... 100% DLP, so all our projectors are based on that technology. Um, we've been working with Texas Instruments for 20 years or so, you know, developing the, the chipset and helping them, you know, create the, the, the technology itself as it's developed. Uh, we're working with LED technology now and uh, laser technology. So it's a hybrid solution, whether it's 
with the DLP at this moment in time, whether it's lamp-based, laser, or LED, we know they all fit together. So we know that lamp, laser, LED with DLP is a commonality and it all works and it gives us a versatility behind that as well. Yeah. Um, and then things like HD base T, which is still a, uh, I feel it's a very, very important connector in yeah. terms of certainly the installation kind of business. Uh, but I think also the more we can integrate HD base T into projection in a meeting environment, uh, again, allows our partners to add the peripherals, add the control units, add the you know switches and everything like that, yeah. and simplify the experience of the end user. Uh, the, all, the complete connectivity mm -hmm. over Cat5, mm -hmm. great. <laughs> it just makes everything so simple. Yeah, and, and what it means as well is that you know, as generations of projection change, if we can continue that, it means that the actual installation process of replacement is much more simple mm -hmm. in terms of the technology, but it's more expandable as well. You know, Cat5 is much easier to replace, um, but it's also got a huge bandwidth in terms of what it can offer. From a from a connectivity point of view, mm. whether it's video, audio, control, it's all in the same, yeah. the same connectivity. So, so that's the technology we're doing. Um, just to give you an update on resolutions, uh, we cover all the resolutions from SVGA right up to Wide Ultra XGA. Uh, we don't go any bigger than Wide Ultra XGA in projection yet, um, but there will be 4K, which everyone is obviously talking about. Um, we'll, we'll be looking at 4K this year. Um, that's exciting. The main categories that we see predominantly in our business is XGA to 1080p currently. So SVGA is a market um, in most countries today is declining significantly, um, except probably Asia. Um, and that's just purely because of its, you know, it's extremely cost effective, mm. but from a resolution and, a, and a, an end user's, you know, experience, you know, laptops these days are really you know 1080p and above that's right in an SVGA resolution so we don't focus on it too much we do have products in that category but our focus is really XGA upwards yeah um, and then on the lens side of things for projectors we cover standard short throw and ultra short throw projection um, and that again gives you the variety of applications and installation uh, examples so you know whether you've got a classroom and you need an ultra short throw projector right on the wall um, or you're allowed to put it a little bit further away, we can provide those solutions. So that basically covers business and education, no problem. Again, business education, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and we will be launching projectors later this year as well, uh, not too distant futures, where we'll have lens options. So more in the installation, staging kind of environment or big auditoriums mm. uh, where you can have, you know, ultra long throw lens, so you can position it right at the back of the auditorium. So again, we're trying to create our product range that's flexible enough for business education and within the range of projection to try and provide solutions that allow the versatility of different rooms. So just to touch warranties, um, it's always important in terms of the warranties. So in focus standard projector warranty with lamps is a two year warranty. Um, we have virtually no conditions around that in terms of, you know, there's no T's and C's that you've got to have this, that, and the other. We're pretty transparent in that. If it breaks within the two years, um, then we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in terms of our warranty. Mm. We do all warranty activities and everything in South Africa. So there's, you know, a local um, solution to support that uh, through, through yourselves. Um, and then we have a one-year lamp warranty or a thousand hours. Um, typically at this moment in time, both of those two we seldom need to use. So a two-year warranty, I think the statistics last year for, for InFocus in South Africa was we had seven cases out of hundreds of projectors that, you know, thousands that we've got on the market here if we look at the Western Cape education environment. Um, so quality of the projectors is really paramount to the way that we do our business. Um, and the same with the lamps as well. Lamps these days are lasting up to 15,000 hours. Uh, failures are not, you don't see them it's bursting and things like that. So mm. Standard warranties are there, optional warranties are there as well in case schools or businesses want to provide a little bit more comfort for themselves. And then our laser projector, we have a five-year warranty of 20,000 hours. And again, that, you know, with the technology these days, uh, they're pretty resilient in terms of going through to that five-year period and cost yeah. of ownership, which is really important on laser 
and by the end of the five years, you're really in a point where you want to be replacing the projector rather than thinking about, mm. you know. But you, you've had all those great benefits of the laser projector, right, yeah. image, better colors, et cetera, uh, for five years. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's a critical thing as we'll go through in, the, in, in further in the, in the discussion. Um, you know, the laser technology is really changing yeah. in terms of the way that the landscape of projection is. So if we look at the in-focus range of projectors, and I think this is the important thing for everyone to, to, to kind of get their heads around, we're trying to categorize our projector lineup to help it simplify the experience of choice. So there's probably about 30 projectors at the moment in, the, in our channel in, in terms of range. We're going to expand that this year as well. So, you know, the more projectors you put in the market, it gives the, tech, it gives the flexibility to our users, but it also adds complexity in terms of which projector do I choose for which environment. So we're trying to help you in this. So we've got four categories at the moment in our projector lineup. We've got a Genesis, Light Pro, Quantum LED, and Quantum Laser. Obviously, Quantum LED and Quantum Laser kind of tell itself it's an LED-based projector or it's a laser-based projector. And then our Genesis is our entry level. So that's where we're looking at really the cost, cost um, uh, kind of focused and affordability. And then our Light Pro is more of the meeting room starting to add more of the capabilities and the connectivity to the projector range that you may see in a, in a, in a meeting room or a boardroom. So it helps and we feel that clarifies some of this selection of choice. If you're really looking for an affordable projector, you should be just looking in the Genesis range. If you're looking for laser, just look in the laser range. But you know, there's no point going into a light pro range if your customer's got a real tight budget because you're just going to be in a situation where you're trying to sell them something that you know has great technology, but it's just out of their price range. Hmm. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail, not dramatic detail, but just to explain a bit more of those four categories, um, projectors. Um, so Genesis, uh, this is our what we call our 110 series. So we have 110, we've got an AABD and a BBST to differentiate the categories in there. It's focused predominantly on small, medium businesses, education, value proposition. That's really pretty much where it is. We have good basic connectivity. So you're looking at HDMI, you've got your VGA, um, audio, um, but that's kind of really where it's ending. Okay, you're not looking at, you know, RJ45, not looking at HD based T or any of that kind of technology. And they're all DLP, as I said at the beginning, and then they range from three and a half thousand, three thousand four hundred, three thousand eight hundred lumens. So the brightness aspect of the projector is more than adequate for a meeting room, you know, that, that holds 10, 20 people with ambient daytime light. So they're, they're perfect for that kind of environment, classrooms, um, again, and the long lamp life. So up to 15,000 hours if you're running it in a in the economical mode um, and the economical mode on these projectors are really cool because it'll actually adjust the brightness for you based on what is being presented on the screen in terms of the actual uh, uh, the background if you've got lots of white background it can reduce the brightness of the projection because it doesn't need to create as much uh, in terms of the brightness for the for the visual side of things lens side standard lens um, in terms of 1.1 across all of the models and then we have the BBST range, which is short throw range. Okay, so we have a short throw. And that's something that's important for us. And we launched these projectors at the end of last year. And it was important for us that we felt that in the entry level environment, short throw projectors were still a big requirement for education. Education, especially. Yeah. Especially education. Yeah. But we do see it a lot more now in business. Because you know we're in a presentation room. If you've got somebody standing up or walking around in front of the presentation, you know the worst thing is you, you want to project a shadow on the on the screen. So we do see some businesses that want to have short throw, but predominantly education. So in a value proposition, in focus now has you know single HDMI, double HDMI, short throw um, options that really can fulfill you know the needs of a, a small medium company or education environment. Can I just ask you quickly, the uh, the AA, BB, uh, the STL obviously stands for short term, yep. the AA and the BB, what so, does that stand for? So what we, it's, it's kind of, so the AA and BB really is just to de determine the difference between the connectivity. The AA doesn't actually stand for anything, it's just a sequence of letters, 
Um, we've had XV, we've had X, we've had, you know, Vs, all sorts of things. Um, we just try to keep something that's a little bit easier to differentiate within the product range. Um, AA basically means that they've all got one HDMI on these projectors, um, VGA, the BB range is double HDMI, it's got the VGA, um, it's got slightly more connectivity. Right. So right. just to easily determine the two. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's no level, there's, there's, no BBI, there's, there's <laughs> nothing, no. I mean, we could have had something totally different. In some ways, the reason for it as well is that our next generation, if we wanted to launch another generation of Genesis, we would probably look at like an AB and a BC or something like that, or a, oh. a CCDD. And it's a lot of the time it's also helped distribution and resellers know that we're moving from one platform to another platform, but keeping it within similar category. Right. If we change the part numbering completely, it kind of doesn't help the evolution of that range mm. flow from one generation to the next generation. So our, our previous models that we had last year were XV and XAs. Yeah. So again, differentiation and the connectivity. Great. Okay. So that's Genesis. Entry level, um, covering, you know, the good basic kind of projector that you're going to need. Mm. We then move up into Light Pro, and we've got a Light Pro here. I don't know if everyone can see it, but this is a Light Pro uh, product here. The Light Pro um, actually was developed, strangely enough, um, around the Western Cape Education environment. So Western Cape Education wanted um, the ability to have wireless in their projectors. Um, the first range of projectors had a little dongle that you plugged into the back of the USB. And now they kind of want all of that hidden away or integrated. So we developed the Light Pro 130 series and the 2130 series. And you can see from the, the, the image, it actually has a door on the top here with a little cover in the case. You unscrew this cover, take it off, and then inside there, there's a USB and a HDMI connectivity that you can plug in a Fire Stick, a you know an Intel uh, stick, or you know I don't know one of these Amazon, and then you can have content displayed, um, all encased, so it's all secure, so it can't be stolen. So we we spent a lot of time to create this around the Western Cape education environment. We had some success with it. Um, Hopefully in the future we can do some more business in, in terms of that education environment. Uh, that's a great little cubby to hide those extra accessories. Yeah, yeah. From two fingers. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's primarily the point is that two fingers come in and out, and we try to hide, find a way of hiding that mm. um, and give it more of a permanent solution as well. You can install this in the ceiling. You could have it installed, and you just come in and you can connect definitely to the screen. Mm. Um, if you wanted a mouse keyboard to control a device, you plug that in the back as well. And again, you've got an all-in-one solution there. Again, the flexibility there is that our, our channel partners and resellers can choose the peripheral that they want to add mm. with the projector and, and, and enclose it inside there if they wanted to do that. So, and, and in fact, actually listening to the installer doing the actual job team, this is yeah. actually what the clients are yeah. asking for out there. Yeah. What can we do? Yeah, we specifically, it was purely about Western Cape Education Department wanting a secure environment for providing wireless capable projectors um, that were easily upgradable from wireless capabilities. Yeah, that's so, right. You know, that's what we want to do as well. We want to listen and talk and have this uh, you know, process where if, if something is required, what can we do? Uh, yeah. And actually some of the things we've done actually have been mostly driven from South Africa. As funny as it may sound, the remote control, we, we have remote control at our entry level projectors. We used to be able to um, create an AV blank on the screen. So if a teacher wanted to hide the screen, they had the remote control and did it. We actually took that away from our remote controls because we didn't feel it was necessary. You know, the time that people were using the remotes was kind of long gone. They were using laptops to control the displays. Um, and we had a requirement from South Africa again. And we actually went and created a generation of remote that added that AV blank key back on there. So, you know, we listen, we want to listen with, you know, we're flexible to a degree in terms of what we want to do, um, but it's all about the end user. It's mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, making sure that the product is there for them. So the Light Pro range, much better connectivity. You've got multiple HDMIs, you've got VGA out on this. Start to look at RJ45. You start looking at RS232 on these projectors as well. So, you know, a bit more of the connectivity for control environments yeah. uh, comes into it. Brightness increases. So we go from you know mid three thousand range now up to four and a half thousand range lumens. 
same lamp life. So again, that's very important, up to 15,000 hours. And then we have different options in lens, lenses as well. So the 130 series, which is the, let's say, the starting point, it's a standard 1.1 lens, so pretty close to the screen. And then we start looking at 1.3, and then we've got short throw lenses as well. Again, can be used in education, can be used in business, mm. and versatile in terms of the applications and positioning in the room. Um, this box on the top is called Tech Station. So if anyone wants to reference tech that, station. it's called Tech Station. So Correct. objectives with Tech Station, that's what this is on the top here. Correct. So that's, uh, that's the Light Pro range, and we'll continue to develop this range um, during the course of this year. Mm. Right. If we move on to then LED, um, and LED at the moment we have two projectors. We have a wide XGA and a HD uh, 1080p ultra mobile. So this is your mobile salespeople. This is myself walking around, visiting customers, wanting to do quick presentations. Um, it is literally, it's it's not quite the size of your hand. It's, it's like, but it's you know about a kilo in weight. Um, it has all of the connectivity you would need traveling uh, in terms of VGA. HDMI, um, it's a fixed lens, so you put it on the table, you move it where you need to, it's on and off straight away, there's no lamp start up and shut down kind of process. Um, there is the capability to add Wi-Fi uh, to this through a dongle um, that you can buy on the open market. Um, and then we've got USB playback in here as well. Um, the Wi-Fi um, is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it means that as a salesperson, you can go in and you can just connect wirelessly, you don't have to carry any more yeah. uh, cables with you as well. So if you've got your content presentation uh, in, I presume, a JPEG format or a movie format, yes. you can just play it from the USB stick. USB stick, stick it in the back. Yeah. It's got a built-in player, um, audio and video, so you know you can actually present. It's got speaker built into these projectors as well. Uh, I presume you've got the play and pause button on the remote. On the remote, remote, you just navigate through the back and forward uh, yeah. feature, so that's all built in there. Um, and LED means it's 30,000 hours. So Again, you know, you're looking at the lifespan of a really good investment um, on a mobile projector that is robust enough you can throw it in and out of your That's a lot of presentations. It's huge. <laughs> Actually, it's too many presentations. <laughs> but it's, it's, form, it's, it's really important that the form factor here is, you know, very specific. Um, and that comes about as well, I spoke to you earlier about it, DLP technology. We can get these form factor projectors in DLP because of the, the versatility of the DLP chips. You know, the, the engine itself it can be very, very small. Um, and I'll come to some of that in terms of as we discussed a little bit more. LED, we're going to evolve this year as well. So we're looking to add more products into the LED category. Oh. You know, we're trying to move away from the lamp based technology. We think it still has a place in the market in terms of price, but from a cost of ownership, long term quality, um, LED laser is really where we're moving to as a, as a brand. And we move into laser now. So this is, you know, our 3140 series. Um, we have um, wide XGA, sorry, wide ultra XGA and 1080p in this category at the moment. Um, certainly looking small, medium, medium businesses in terms of corporate meeting rooms. Not quite there for an auditorium. You could get away with it if it's got very low light. Um, it's got five and a half thousand lumens, so it is, it is pretty bright. And because of the laser color reproduction and the light mm. uh, loss of, of these projectors is much less than what you would see on a, on a lamp-based projector. Well, I think certainly in, for instance, school hall markets, you, you've seen previous years, 4,000 lumens bulb uh, uh, projectors being put into school halls and struggling. This will definitely do a much better job than that and yeah, at, a, at an affordable price. Level. Yeah, absolutely. And, and because of the laser and the way that we develop the, uh, the laser technology, um, Traditional DLP projectors have single color wheel, so you like, you know, the color repro uh, reproduction is much better now on these projectors because we have a second color wheel in there as well. Okay. So we're able to really get vivid colors. Mm. Um, if you want to compare it, we can get to the point now where people are comparing DLP laser now with what LCD used to be like. Right. So that kind of color reproduction mm. on laser technology with, you know, the phosphor color wheel and then, you know, a regular color wheel really can make a massive difference and high contrast great blacks mm. you know um, and this projection because it's now laser means the versatility of installation and lifespan so you can run these 24 7 as a dlp 
laser allows you to do 360 degree installation. So you can start looking at retail if you wanted to, shops pointing down on the floor, mm. you know, there's all sorts of kind of things. And this category of projector now with the laser in our 3140 series, you can start adding horizontal and uh, vertical uh, lens shift, keystone correction, four corner correction. Mm. So you can really get your, your image perfect from the screen. From an installation point of view, that is great. Right, because you often uh, there's air contact in the way yep. uh, and you need to put the projector you can only put it here yep. and so, so then the lens shifts and that corner correction works really well yeah and, and what it also helps as well is that you may have a legacy install yeah and you need to move it slightly you know where well, you can still use, use the legacy installation location maybe but you know you can move the, the image based on the lens shift capability mm. so um, we're not you know we're allowing a little bit again the versatility for the installation process we're seeing a lot of um, of screens, of four by three screens being replaced with sixteen by nine or sixteen by ten screens. Yeah. yeah. Um, but are you still working from a almost the same point of, of the projection? You are, and, and that you know not only is the challenge of getting the formation right in terms of changing from four to three, um, but also the distance. Yeah. Yeah. You know, generally, there's a distance um, because the four by three resolution projectors are normally you know one point one lens, you know, so mm. they're much closer. So mm. Um, having having a much more versatile lens helps, um, and then again, you know, we, we're starting to add a lot more connectivity. This is the first range that we've got HD based here. Mm. So again, step up again, allowing that full installation for the auditorium. That's so, right. Yeah. So that's our first laser product, and then our second one um, that we've got in the in the range at the moment is our ultra short throw laser. So although not launched from in focus as a as an education product we launched this as a meeting room business product price point connectivity and everything is what we would consider probably you know a bit too high um, it is still sold into education because of the ultra short and laser technologies mm. built into it so um, we've got you know great color because of the way that the laser engine is working long life in terms of lamp uh, 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 the lifespan because of the laser technology as well and again 360 degree horizontal vertical 24 7 operation because of DLP. So the cost of ownership, mm. you know, maybe an initial outlay of purchasing the projector may be slightly higher than normal, but the cost of ownership over those five years, which you probably would use a laser projector for with the 20,000 hours, 30,000 hours, you know, that's that's really where you're looking at. There's that not much on the market in terms of short throw laser. There's not, um, There's not a lot out there. And if you start to compare generally pricing, uh, it seems to me like we're in a really good spot here. No, I mean, the ultra short throw lasers, yes, there's a limited market opportunity now in terms of brands that are offering them. Um, they are getting slightly more available, um, but we're, we've, we've managed to get a product that's really good. Mm. Um, that covers wide XGA, X, uh, XGA, wide XGA and 1080p again. So again, the versatility yeah. is there for it at a good price point. Um, and we'll continue to look at this as well. We'll continue to look at how do we develop laser ultra short throw going forward still around the 4000 lumens maybe a little bit more um, trying to manage the connectivity on it to give a really good comprehensive package mm. in terms of our projectors that's great yeah okay dlp versus lcd i think a lot of people ask us the question all the time <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so um, i'll be very open here because in focus sneak preview we're looking at doing lcd products as well for the first time in many many years this year so keep your eyes open for it um, hopefully you know in a few months we'll have some good news to release on, on some lcd products it's certainly something we feel that is important for us as a brand to give again the flexibility and the diversity in terms of our projection range dlp is becoming very good um, but still you know there are good things and there are bad things from both of these technologies so you know i never tell anybody and we should never tell anybody that dlp is better than lcd and i would not like anybody to say that lcd is better than dlp yeah because there are things that are very different i mean the reliability from a dlp is much better historically than lcd lcd has used to be organic now they're inorganic but um you know the lifespan of a chip that's electronically managed versus a, a material that's passed through laser light source or a lamp light source the 
the LCD color or the LCD image will deteriorate much faster than a DLP projector. Okay, but LCD has at the moment with the lamp based more vivid colors because of the way they can reproduce their colors. They're not as small, they're not as mobile. Mm. Um, so, you know, we need to play this by ear in terms of the key thing for all of you is to understand your customer, what their requirements are, you know, and then find the right projector for that. And that's why InFocus wants to bring LCD out because we don't want you as a customer of ours to say, we need LCD today and we say we haven't got LCD mm. you know, because maybe they want better color or, you know, maybe they want sharp image for data. Mm. Um, DLP projectors, from an image point of view, they're much better produced for kind of video motion. Um, they have better blacks. The pixels are not as um, visible. Mm. And you might think that's kind of weird to say that if I've got a 1080p LCD and I've got a 1080p, you know, DLP projector, then surely the pixels will be exactly the same. The amount of pixels will be the same. But in terms of the way that they're generated is very different. And LCD tends to have um, in between each pixel, there's a slightly wider gap. Mm. Therefore, the clarity of the okay, image, yeah. the clarity is slightly, you know, less prominent in terms of than a DLP. Um, so again, you know, there's different things. Some of the negatives on DLP is that if you want to go to three chip, if you want to go to the full installation, the three chip DLP projectors are seriously much more expensive. So, you know, we need to be cautious about it. Some people have rainbow tech. You know, it's not as visible these days, but um, if you have it, you have it. You can't ever get rid of it. I've not seen that. And that's the on, point. On, on, on an in-focus difficulty. No, and that's the point is that, you know, these pros and cons for both technologies, unless you physically see it or, you know, right. it impacts the actual, they're not really a pro or a con. So I have, I've, I made some comparisons in what I've experienced before mm -hmm. and, and used before with a few various brands. and. What, what is this model here? This uh, 138A? Yeah, this is the 138. The Infocus 138. Yeah. And I tested it with this one specifically as well. Mm -hmm. And we played around with it a little bit and got amazing colors. Yeah. Uh, I could see um, red was red, green was blue, uh, green was green, <laughs> blue was blue. I could see, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yellows were, were bright. And yeah. It wasn't that changeover from yellow to light green to green wasn't a, a, a mush it was yeah. defined and colors which i, I was uh I had to look at it carefully and i was surprised i was right like, oh, look, okay we really are getting it with with the lp and i was very happy with it and, and i'm sure a lot of people on on, on on the webinar at the moment are probably thinking well hang on a minute the lp has always been really bad in yellows and greens and you know historically it was pretty terrible you know right at the very beginning but Texas Instruments developed brilliant color along with InFocus. You know, mm -hmm. we developed the way that colors are reproduced. You know, the segments of the color wheel, how big they are, how fast does it spin? You know, all of these kind of capabilities were refined over the years to the point where now the DLP color is very good. Mm -hmm. it, it may not be as vibrant as an LCD, but again, that depends on your customer. Some people look at the screen and like to have this more natural kind of color rather than this vibrant kind of, you know, luminous kind of in, in your face, in your face kind of experience. So, um, you know, the colors are very good now in DLP equally as they are yeah. in LCD. We have some benefits in terms of the long, you know, the life cycle. We can run 24-7. You know, we don't have any filters that need to be cleaned. So there's no maintenance with, mm. with DLP projectors, which is really important, again, for your cost of ownership. You know, if you've got a, an LCD projector installed and you have to go in there once every six months to clean the filters, the cost of ownership for that, not only for the hassle of doing it, but is much more for the end user. Mm. DLP doesn't have to have that uh, constant maintenance. You can literally let them run. Um, they, they don't get that hot. Mm. Um, the hottest thing in, in, in a projector currently at the moment is, is the lamp. And yeah. as we move to laser, you know, it makes it very good. And you, so that apart with an already affordable projector uh, with great colors, uh, with great brightness, with blacks being yep. blacker, and, and you, you, your reproduction is is really good. Yep. So I think we, we really are the winner here. And, and another way of doing this, and I, you know, 
I won't mention their names, but if we look at other brands in the market today, if you start looking at the, the, the amount of brands carrying DLP projector, there's a lot more DLP projector brands than there are LCD brands. Mm -hmm. And that's not because one is better than the other. It's just a case of certain companies like to focus and market themselves around a particular technology or they're aiming on not having the hassles. You know, if you've got a 24 seven projector that's got low maintenance, it's got good quality image, colors are great, you know, versatility in terms of connectivity and everything. Like, why wouldn't you use DLP? But again, you know, we need to understand that there is a market for LCD um, and there will always be a market for LCD. Mm, absolutely. All right. Okay. So having said that, it all changes with laser. Okay. <laughs> So, lamp-based technology is one thing, you know, and we have predominantly lamp-based. Laser technology is slightly different. So, this is just a quick diagram of, you know, how the laser side of it. So, not only does laser change in certain things, the light source changes in terms of we can get higher brightness output um, with less redundancy in terms of lamp issues. That's one thing that's absolutely amazing. We get double color wheel solutions now, whereas previously we had single. So our even better color generation, the phosphor and the normal DLP uh, color, color wheel. We have the DLP chip for the reliability of it, again, 24 seven, um, but also the engine that kind of creates this DLP uh, environment with, with, with the, the mirror solution um, on the chip itself means we can have a lot more compact projectors. So traditionally, you'll see that an LCD product will be bigger mm. than what we can get out of a DLP. If we make the DLP projectors, such as the light right here, bigger than what you would think it is, that's because of the optional doors. Maybe we wanted to make the cooling in a lamp base, so we made them bigger to allow more airflow. As we start to see laser projectors, what we're going to see is we're going to be able to try and compress these projectors into smaller form factors. Doesn't mean they're all going to come out immediately, mm. uh, but that capability of DLP with laser for us really changes the game. We do know that LCD and you know the other brands on there are doing laser technology as well, um, but it means that we can really come to the forefront and having reliable, no maintenance projectors, uh, great color. We're environmentally friendly. You know we're not using lamps any longer, so there's you know lots of benefits for doing that. But overall package that we're able to deliver is much better. So that's DLP in terms of laser. So, you know, colors are going to be much better. Life cycle, like I said, 30,000 hours, you know, for LED or laser kind of projectors versus your 10, 15,000 for lamp. Mm. Um, you've got no, you know, traditional cost of the projector over time is much more beneficial. Um, environmentally friendly, which we all think is maybe not so important. Um, but I'll tell you, customers in Sweden, they don't want lamp projectors. The governments are saying we don't want lamp projectors. So there is a motion and there is a, a, an evolution in terms of making sure that the products we're developing, you know, appreciate the materials we use inside um, in terms of the actual impact on the environment. And again, that's good. Yeah, that's safer good. temperatures as well. I mean, lamps these days, if I put my hand on this lamp when it's fully, it's hot, mm. you know, it's, it's with laser, we're not going to have that. So laser for us is really a good game changer. So in focus, you know, we're, we're really focused on, you know, the LED laser transformation in the projector range. We're focusing on a lot of development in that environment. Uh, we'll launch some new products this year in those two categories. Lamp will always have its place at this moment in time, purely because of the affordability. Yeah. So that's, that's where we are in terms of our projector range. Um, the other point I wanted just to make before we can go to Q&A if we need to, in focus does interactive displays as well. So, you know, we're in the business and education environment for interactive displays. I know Alphatech are doing something similar, uh, but it's something that we know as a package and as a development of us as a company, we, we know that there isn't a market out there that projection meets a certain functionality and a requirement, but we also see that there's an evolution in terms of the interactive display market. So we, we're getting involved in that and we have been involved since 2010 in terms of doing display business and collaboration solutions and software for that. Uh, so it's all part of our 
ecosystem. Well, itself. it also just shows of a company that keeps its ear to the ground in terms of yeah. technology. Where, where are we heading? Where, you know, where are we at right now? What is yeah. the requirement? Yeah. So that's it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. yeah, it's, it's a very good thing, and you know, we're not scared of trying stuff. You know, we've done many things over the years. Um, we had our own video conferencing platform, Connex. You know, we launched that. We thought it was going to be the right time to launch it. We launched it five years ago. It was too early. Had we launched it last year or the year before that, we would have been in business, you know, because we'd have had a, probably a very good video service. Uh, it's still available. Uh, we still offer it to customers who want to do video conferencing on a, on a web base like a Zoom or a Microsoft Teams. But it's not the core, you know, category of where we are in terms of our, in our, in our product line at this moment in time. So it's down to you guys now, really, in terms of uh, exploring our world, you know, getting, getting the InFocus brand you know, in, in your list of products, uh, asking the questions, introducing it to your customers, um, and finding the right solution from our product category today and also going further forward in the future. Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. Pleasure. Appreciate it. That was, uh, that was great. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, I don't see any questions in the list there currently. Uh, let's give it a moment to see if any, anything pops up. Yeah, or any just general discussions if someone wants to have a, you know. Yeah. So while everybody's thinking of a question to ask, mm. so from the Alpha Technologies team, uh, we're definitely not new to the AV side of things. Yeah. Uh, Pro AV has always been our game. All of us that work in the company, that uh, <laughs> We've got great experience in the EV game, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, not that we know everything, but we, we, we strive to know our, yeah. our products and our solutions. And uh, I would just want to encourage anybody to come and speak to us about solutions. Yeah. Um, we're very happy that with in focus projectors at the end of at the end of the display line, yeah. uh, we are able to offer the professional audio um, from our range of products and video from our range of products. Uh, we can now complete the solution uh, in house. That's which it, is, which is great. Now, now you have a one-stop shop. You know, yeah. You know, Alpha Tech can give you everything that you need. And yeah. you know, I'm always available for questions. And you know, we also can help in terms of assisting not only yourself but your customers as well with selecting the right product. Or you know, maybe they, they don't see it in our portfolio today, but you know, let us know if there's something that needs to be happening because we we've, we've always got a roadmap we're always looking at things and if we get that feedback from you then it maybe encourages us to do something that we weren't particularly looking at at that moment in time yeah. so yeah. you know this dialogue is important we're happy to have you guys on board you know we understand that your capabilities and also the resellers that you're working with as well you know they're the best in the market so you know we're really happy to have you on board and more than more than happy to do more of these sessions as well which we will plan to get a bit more detail behind each product range uh, and, and I think added to that as well is if we if we have anybody that wants us to meet with a client, uh, with a school, and uh, you just want us to come out, um, not wearing any hats per se, uh, but just come out as solutions architects, uh, that is part of what we do um, from our technology side and certainly from InFocus side as well. With no questions there. Michael, back over to you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Nick and, and Daniel. And again, uh, we are, are happy to have InFocus on board uh, as our range of products. So again, thanks for your time again uh, this morning, Daniel, as well. Uh, I think like Daniel mentioned, we will schedule a couple of a little bit more in-depth uh, product-specific webinars as we go forward. Um, okay. So yeah, we, we trust everybody enjoyed uh, this morning's webinar. Uh, again, yeah. any, sorry. yeah, sorry, carry on. Sorry, I was going to just say, look, people aren't asking questions today, but, you know, if after this you've got questions, please just fire them over to us, you know. Yeah. Um, we, want to, we want to make sure that you guys are comfortable with the product range and, um, you know, anything that comes up, I'm, I'm always available. Um, these guys have got contact details, so um, more the better, please. Yeah, 100%. Wonderful. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, on that note, uh, I think we'll sign off. Uh, again, thanks for everybody for joining us. Um, and uh, for any other webinars or any future webinars, please remember to visit our, our Alpha Tech webpage. Uh, click on the training um, tab up at, up at the menu. 
Uh, it'll take you over to our, our webinar platform where you can see this webinar and others and also uh, sign up and, and register for any future webinars. Okay, thanks, Nick. Uh, thanks, Daniel. We'll see Thank you guys soon. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Cheers, everyone.